Juice's report. We'll follow him through all the important stages as he analyzes the existing system and specifies the requirements for a new computerized one. The first thing I did when I started on the clock department project was to sit back and gather my thoughts. I spent a day or so deciding how I should approach the study, planning what to do, deciding who I should talk to, and also collecting together a few details which I already knew about the clock department. I'd certainly have to look at the present procedures for stock handling. I'd have to study the clerical records kept in the clock department, and then I'd have to decide how a computer system would change the records and the procedures, what the benefits would be. There would be problems as well as benefits. I'd have to consider those too. I'd have to talk to the clock buyer. There'd be other departments involved, like the audit department, on the branches which receive the clocks, and I'd have to talk to them too. I decided to start with the clock buyer. I already knew that he was enthusiastic to replace as many of his manual procedures as possible. Good. Now, what does that entail for our department? Well, I shall need to come down and chat to you several times. I shall need to interview several members of your staff. And then I shall need to have a close look at all the stock handling procedures you've got in the department, particularly the deliveries from the suppliers and also the consignments out to the branches. The other thing which I'll have to do is have a very close look at the clerical records that you keep in the department. You know, I'll have to determine what the function of each is. I'll have to see who originates them. So really, there's quite a lot of work for me to do, I think. But what I'd like to do to start with, because I think it's the most important part of the system, is have a good look at what you do when you send a consignment out to a branch. Well, the best place to start mm. would be in the warehouse. Yeah where they're now pulling out orders ready for mm. dispatch. So this is an order form. I suppose it gives you the type of clock and the quantity. That's correct. Now, she's just taking three of R161. R161 does not mean that the type of clock is indicated by a letter and a number. That is correct, yes. Uh, the letter R, in this case, means mm. it's a miniature alarm. Yeah. And now she's writing the branch and the quantity onto the bin card. Yes, that's right. Very good. So this is where you write out the consignments, is it? That's right. Excuse me, can I ask you why you seem to be sorting them into some kind of sequence? I'm putting them in order ready for the consignment next. Hmm. Right. What's she actually writing down, Norman? She's now preparing the consignment note. Uh, first of all, she identifies the consignment. Hmm. This particular one looks as if it's for Birmingham. Yeah. Then she writes down the quantity, the catalogue number for each yeah. item. Right, I'm going to make a few notes on that. At this stage, I'd learnt quite a lot about the clock department. There certainly seemed to be scope for replacing some of the manual procedures. We could save a lot of writing out by storing the descriptions and prices of clocks in the computer system. For my next meeting with the clock buyer, I had to start quantifying the facts I'd discovered. Yes, I know about the investigation. What exactly do you want to know? Well, Mr Latter, what I need to do now is take some measurements of what goes on in your department, really. Um, for a period of, say, a fortnight, I'd like all your ladies to record the times they take for certain tasks. And I've got these timing sheets here, which I'd like them to fill in for this. So what I mean is that whenever they start picking an order, I want them to write the start time down. As soon as they finish, I want them to write the time down. Whenever anyone starts writing out consignment notes, I'd like the time they start written down and the time they finish recorded, and in all cases, the number of clocks that have been involved. By now I decided that consignment notes were very important. I knew what information should be printed on the consignment note, quantity, code number, description and price, so I had to decide on the headings and what instructions should be shown. I also had to decide how many copies the consignment note should have and where each copy should go to. Then I could discuss the design with the other people involved. For example, the audit department. Audit clerks had to batch and control the consignment notes. 
So I sent a copy of the new consignment note to the internal audit manager, and I made an appointment to see him a few days later. So this is what the new consignment note will look like. This part is the receipt part, which will actually be sent back to you from the branches. If there's anything wrong with the consignment, details of shortages and surpluses will be shown here. Is that okay? Is it possible for the consignment notes to be sequentially numbered by branch, so that if a consignment note is missing, mm. we notice it immediately? Mm. Um, what you mean is... Let's have a look. So, you'd want a number here. So, say I put 13 in there. What you're thinking is that the 13 means that this is the 13th consignment note that's gone to this branch so far this year. Well, I think, I think we'll be able to do that, OK? Because the computer will be able to work out the number each time before printing the consignment note. So it should be OK. As well as holding meetings with people at head office, I also had to make sure that the new system would be acceptable to the branches. Hello, Mr. Roberts. Nice to see you again. Good afternoon. Nice to see you. Uh, what I really want to do this afternoon is have a good look at what happens to the clocks when they actually come to the branch. Would that be possible? Yes, if you'd like to come with me to the rear of the shop, the delivery van will be due any moment. All right, I'll follow you. Oh. This is the stock room, and the first thing we do is to unpack all the cases and check that we've received all the stock. I can see how important it is that we get the clocks in the right sequence on the consignment note, because it makes the check-in so much easier. By now, several weeks after my first visit to the clock buyer, I was able to prepare a report of my analysis. I'd studied the existing records and procedures, and I knew what people wanted out of the new system. In the clock department, the other related departments and the branches. Now I had to check the report with the data processing manager. I've got a copy of the draft report for the clock department. I wondered if you could have a good look through and tell me what you think about it, really. Thank you very much, I will. Not too thick, I don't think, is it? No, yeah, that's fine. I've also got a copy of the consignment note, as I think it'll look under the new computer system. I wonder if you could give me any comments on that as well. Yes, I'll comment on that. There's one problem, really. Under the present manual system, we use a yellow consignment note to indicate that the note belongs to the clock department, so it's immediately obvious it's no other department. Well, I prefer not to use uh, different coloured computer paper. Um... I wondered if we could use department number, perhaps, a nine somewhere. Yes. Um... Perhaps we could have a, a large nine over the whole of the consignment note. One very big one? Yes. Oh. Yes, that's the sort of thing I was thinking of. Well, do you think you could let me have any comments on the report by Monday, preferably? Yes. If the meeting is the next day? Yes, certainly I'll do that. OK. Thank you very much. Thanks so much. Thank you, Andrew. This meeting was really a milestone in my work. I'd completed the analysis and submitted a proposal. If the committee accepted my report, I'd have to go ahead and start to design the new system. And the clock buyer. What about savings? Well, we should certainly have a saving on data prep in the computer department. And similarly, in the branch audit department, there'll be a considerable saving on batching and controlling the consignment note documents. Well, those are the benefits. What about costs? Well, we'll need extra store for our main 2904 computer. We'll need a number of video terminals and hard copy printers. And finally, we'll need something that we call a terminal controller. So those are the areas in which we'll need to spend money on equipment. And you'll find more details about these in the report. 
So those need Let's to... now pause and look at our story in terms of the diagram in your reference text. So far, we've been through these stages. With the difference that in this case, the terms of reference specified a combined initial and detailed feasibility study. And now, once Emily Nevins gets the go-ahead, we come to the remaining stages. But remember that we're looking through the eyes of the systems analyst. We shan't see the programmer at work. Detailed design means designing inputs, outputs, files and forms. The implementation has to be planned. Then it will involve training of staff, testing the new system, conversion of the files and finally going live. First, however, the decision. Emlyn, yeah. I've come from the Computer Development Committee meeting to tell you that the clock department system has been given the go-ahead. Oh, that's tremendous news. Oh, it means I can get down to hard work on it now, then. That's right. We must also look fairly soon at the selection of some terminal equipment yeah. for the system. And whoever it is, we must mm. ensure they're, yeah. as part of the contract, that mm. we get some technical support from the suppliers. Oh, I think we'll need a little anyway. Yeah. Technical support would certainly be needed later on, but before that, I decided to prepare a system flowchart. The flowchart showed me how the different parts of the system were related and helped to structure the different tasks that were involved. I had to design the files which would be needed by various parts of the system. For instance, the catalog file would be accessed at random using an index. And preparing program specifications was yet more paperwork. This program accepted and checked data from the input screens. For instance, looking at the branch screens, if there's something wrong with the branch, send back an error A. If another terminal is already processing this particular branch, send back error B. Error C indicates an error in order number. And most of the spec continues like that. But first, I worked on the screen layouts that the terminals would need. We decided to use ICL equipment, and their technical advisor was an expert on communications and screen design. I'll enter GO and we should get the branch screen out. Fine. What do you think of that? It's certainly user friendly. But how about the notification of errors? What system have you used on that? Did you use the system we discussed earlier? Yeah, I've used a single alpha flashing code to, get, to indicate any kind of operator error. Oh, well, maybe we could put some invalid data into those fields and we'll see how that looks. Yes, yeah, I'll enter a few fields. I'm not the fastest operator in the world. Is that okay? Oh yes, that's fine. That certainly handles the finger trouble element. By the time I'd finished the design work, it was June. We hoped to get the system operational by September, so that it would be ready for the Christmas distribution period. As our deadline approached, we moved into the final phase of the operation, implementation. Training the staff in the clock department was an important part of this. Well, good morning, everybody. What I want to do today is tell you a bit about this piece of equipment called a video terminal and explain to you exactly how you're going to use it under the new computer system. So, take the first group of clocks. You'll enter the catalog numbers and quantities. Send it off to the computer. If it doesn't like it, it'll tell you. You know, you might have entered a wrong catalog number, or you might have got quantity wrong. You carry on like this, and when you get to the end of an order, what will happen is that the computer will sort the clocks into the sequence required for the consignment note, and then it will print all the consignment notes out. So it's not so bad, is it? So I want a volunteer. Oh, and it's, uh, don't be shy, it's nothing to be worried about. Don't, are you going to have a go? OK. Let's have a look. Right. Try entering catalog number W123. Take it fairly slowly. Say is a quantity of... Use the tab key to get to the next field. So there's a quantity of 10 of this clock. So take, take this back mm -hmm. one. It's all right. Enter 10. At the same time as training the operators in the clock department, we had to test all the computer programs to make sure that the system really worked. So I prepared some test data. This was a small amount of dummy information from which I could work out by hand what the output ought to be. 
Then the programmer and I compared the resulting output with my specification. Right, Ron, I've compared your output against what I expected you to get, and in fact, it all looks very good. Apart from one thing. Yeah. You've got a total of 100 clocks on the order. I've got a total of 116. There's a difference of 16 floating around somewhere. Now, I've looked at each individual page, and they definitely add up to 116. So somewhere we're missing 16. Now, the only thing I can think of is when I entered the test data at the terminal, yeah. I entered six screens, and on the sixth and final screen, I entered a total of 16 clocks. So it appears to me that somehow that 16, which was on the last screen, has got lost. I don't know what you think, Finn. Yeah, I think yeah. you're probably right. Mm. Do you want me to have a look at that? Yeah, please, see if you can find anything. Uh... Yeah, it's probably something fairly straightforward. Yeah. Yeah, it, it must be something to do with the handling of the final indicator, Emily. Yeah, there's, yeah. The, there's the final page indicator. Yeah. It jumps yeah. around. Yeah, it's missing mm. out this accumulator here, yeah. which adds into the page total. Mm. Yeah. If I move that back before the handling of that screen, yeah. it'll be OK. Mm. Yeah, E indicates a final yeah. screen, yeah. so... Yeah, yeah. Well, it should be OK. Yeah, I don't think there's much problem. We also had to enter the real data for creating all the files. That took our data entry operators several days. Data for the catalogue file came from a printout of information stored in an existing system, with the descriptions and price changes added by hand. We checked the new files against the original data. A154, £115, triple chime, oak, bentimer. Yes. A155, 89.95, single chime, bentimer. Yes. A157, £65, bim bam, strike, bentimer. Yes. A158, 119.95, triple chime, walnut. Yes. A159, £95, single chime, bentimer. Yes. And although this was necessary in its own right, it helped us to spot something we'd all missed. The prices for these clock batteries seem to be wrong. Look, the price in the catalogue is 50p. I know what's happened, Emily. We normally dispatch these batteries in packs of two, mm. yeah. so the price should be a pound, not 50p. Mm. We, we can change that OK. Now, is there anything else to do before we go live? Not for you, I don't think, actually, but there's one thing I've still got to do. I must write out the operating instructions for the computer operation staff to run the system upstairs. And I've still got one or two other little bit of bits of paperwork to do, but not much. So we should be OK to go live. Good. By now, the system had been fully tested, but we were still a little apprehensive as the first order went through. Well, I think we're all ready to go now. Would you like to enter GO and get the branch screen out? Try again. I'll have another go. Just enter GO. Now enter the branch number, OK? Right, now you can start entering the catalogue numbers and the clocks. Does the operator ever have to enter the selling price? Not very often, no, just if the catalogue number isn't on file. Normally, she won't have to enter it. So that's to cover new lines or yes. omissions yep. that are made? Yep. What happens at the end of an order? At the end, what she'll do is check that the total quantity of clocks in the order agrees with the total quantity that she's got at the top of the screen. Mm. If they agree, all she's got to do is enter an E in that position, mm -hmm. and the computer will sort the clocks, and with a bit of luck, printing will start. It started printing very quickly. Well, Norman, I don't think it'll print quite so quickly when all the terminals are working. It doesn't look too bad, does it? No, it's very yeah. good. Well, most of my job was now over, but there are one or two tasks that remained after the system went live. The most important one was to sort out and arrange all the system documentation. 
The main reason for doing this was to ensure that anyone who wanted to understand how the system operated would get a clear impression straight away from reading all the system folders that form part of the documentation. I kept a close eye on the system for its first two months of operation, and at the end of six months, we held a review to decide how the system was operating. One main problem came to light. This was that the, the terminal operators were making too many errors when they were inputting catalog number and the quantity. What we did to correct this was to introduce something called a check digit on the end of the clock catalog number. So we have a catalog number here, V141. And what we did was add an extra digit on the end, in this case a seven, the check digit. Looking back on the project, it's proved a great success. And what it's done is given us a sound base from which we can computerize the remaining warehouse departments in the company. You'll find the working of that check digit explained in the notes. It's a matter of history that this project was successful. But why? Well, basically because Emlyn Evans went about his work thoroughly and systematically. Thus, he first produced a complete list of things to do. Later on, he had full consultations with everyone involved. Then he designed his forms and screen inputs carefully with expert advice. He took good care that the staff were properly trained. All this meant that going live was enjoyable and successful.